It's a classic sight and sound of summer. A mahogany-clad motorboat, sleek and powerful, cutting across a pristine lake. An ambassador of a bygone era. For fans of these elegant craft, it's not about getting from point A to point B. There's a material difference. Your boat is out on the lake, and the lake is surrounded by woods. There are no fiberglass trees. <laughs> you don't see there. a lot of fiberglass trees. And no. so really, your wood boat, your woody speedboat, has permission from the lake to be there. Matt Smith runs WoodyBoater.com, a website devoted to the joys of classic wooden boats. They're beautiful. They're absolutely stunning. It is really like a Steinway, you know, it's a grand piano on the water. A grand piano that can skim the water at speeds of up to 40 miles an hour. They got the beach side bar that's open here. Across the country, enthusiasts gather at shows to marvel at these wooden works of art that flourished in American waters from the 1920s to the 50s. Thanks for sharing the boat, brother. Hey, no problem. Thanks, guys. It's awesome. But to the boating faithful, this annual gathering in Algonac, Michigan is more of a pilgrimage. These are the waters that your powerboat wants to be on. In its heart, in its DNA, <laughs> in every turn of the propeller, it wants to be here. This is the spot. That's because more than 100 years ago, America's power boating industry was largely born here. When one of its founding fathers, Christopher Columbus Smith, yes, that is his real name, combined boats and engines with mass production. His company, eventually named Chris Craft, quickly became synonymous with fast-paced fun in the sun. So in its heyday, how big was Chris Craft? Put it in terms today, I would say it was like the General Motors of the boating industry. Pete Beauregard owns the Algonac Harbor Club on the site of the original Chris Craft plant. So if Detroit is Motor City, is Algonac Motor Boat City? That's what we call it. Our famous slogan is where it all began. Uh, Algonac to the boating industry is what Henry Ford and Dearborn were to the car industry. With Detroit just 50 miles away, Chris Craft borrowed more than assembly line inspiration from the car industry. It occasionally borrowed parts. This boat has a Ford Mustang steering wheel and horn ring with just the Chris Craft emblem in the center. Oh, right, because Ford was just right down the street. Right down the street, absolutely. But in the 1960s, fiberglass became fashionable, and it brought boatloads of new competitors. To keep up, Chris Craft eventually stopped making wooden boats altogether. So, how fast did this old tub go anyway? A vintage Chris Craft boat got the star treatment in the 1981 film On Golden Pond. Oh, right. Suddenly, there was a renewed interest in getting these beautiful old tubs back out on the water. This boat here came in, we took the bottom off, and we started replacing frames. Wayne Eversole and his team spend countless hours sanding, fastening, and varnishing these old boats back to life. It's that gorgeous sheen, he says, that can be most elusive. Everything has got to be right in the world to get a good varnish job. Your mother-in-law has to be in a good mood. The moon's <laughs> got to be humidity, heat, dust. Um, you could have a bad varnish job, and who knows why. Eventually, a boat can go from looking like this to something like this. A craft capable of transporting passengers back to another era. When you're out on one of these boats, you're in the time that that boat existed. You are inheriting at that moment all the history that that boat lived. It lives in the wood. It comes out. It, you feel it. 